it was literally a process of like actually stepping away from life that helped me find who I was. Mm. I had to let it all go mm. and realize that I didn't know anything. <laughs> and I spent months living on this organic health retreat, just like figuring out who I was. Yeah. And through that process, things started to come in and it was like little bits and pieces activated but it still was like another two years until things really shifted hello welcome to another episode of fearless with crystal stanton where you know we're talking all things how to live a rich, courageous, fulfilled, soul aligned, impact driven life. And I'm really, really excited today because I have a really great friend, mentor, co facilitator, soul sister here today to share her wisdom with all of us. So I'm so, so excited to welcome um, Siobhan Shrevniak, soul activator and light language channel, to the show today. So welcome, Siobhan. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> thank you thank you crystal thanks so much for having me it's an honor and i'm with you on all the th everything i just love our relationship and the yes, um, yeah 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 yes, i to love be it here. it's it's so beautiful is yeah just um that we can be so many different things with people you know it's not just like a this or that anymore it's just all the things together and it's just um a beautiful unraveling and unfolding you know an evolution of all of these friendships that you and I are creating like with each other and with other people. And yeah, so absolutely love it. And for today, again, I don't have a, I don't have a plan because when I was thinking, what should Siobhan and I talk about today? I was like, Oh my God, that there's so many avenues. There's so many things we could talk about. I mean, we, um, we're both manifesting generators. So there's so much in that we could talk about. Um, and also you have like a one, three profile. So you have all this detailed knowledge about all the things, so many different <laughs> things. Plus you have that three. So like you share it through your own experiences. So it could go anywhere today. <laughs> and I do have a couple of little like things that popped in like, oh, we could talk about this, this and this, but I'd really just love to just let it flow and see where it goes. And I thought maybe a good place to start would be around you know, your, um, your role as a light language channel and a soul activator and like what that means and what sort of work that you do in, in your space and in your world and then go from there. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. Well, <clears throat> it's really interesting because I was in the shower this morning and kind of on the same path as you thinking like, how will we guide this podcast? Right. And how do I bring the epilogue of my life into a small succinct piece so like you mentioned being a one three I have all the detailed information <laughs> I could tell you so many things but I'm going to keep it really short what I'm doing now and who I am now is so vastly different from who I was born as who I grew up as and even the experiences that I went through part of me. So I didn't speak light language until a couple of years ago. I had no idea that my soul's purpose was to activate other souls. It was something that I was doing naturally through my lifetime. And I think this is a really important key as well, because to understand your soul purpose, you really have to listen to what other people are reflecting back to you. Right. And so I was always being told, you know, oh, since I met you, I've, you know, gone on this path and I've gone on this path and I've discovered more of who I am and I've been seeing psychics and all these things. And those used to all be things that fascinated me as well. And so what I learned was like, was on my, my heart's desire and what I saw in others was actually what I wanted to be because that was what I was meant to be. Mm. So brief history. I was born through a traumatic birth experience. I was very sick for the first year of my life and then was a mostly healthy kid 
and I was like a competitive dancer. I swam. We were out all the time. I lived on the surface, this incredible life, right, and very busy. However, through, you know, the the experience, and I call it doing because I, I, I wasn't that, so I was doing depression, anxiety from a very young age. I would cry myself to sleep from seven years old. There was a lot of stress in our um, home. My parents did the best that they could but they grew up very very heavy and so I had almost this like duality which is really interesting because when I law learned about all the universal laws I understood this super polarity that I was experiencing even as a child this ultimate joy right and you're as a kid and you're dancing and having all this fun and then I experienced chronic illness and depression and all of these things as a teenager, I then started to go through even more of these experiences. So I started to then kind of feel um, pain in my back, which led to about 15 years living with chronic pain, maybe even 17. And everything kept building, right? Because the physical body, I wasn't taught to release emotions. I wasn't taught that it was safe to work through anything. And so I would stuff everything in. And then that expressed as all kinds of interesting things. So in my 20s, I moved overseas and I lived alone in many interesting countries as a young woman, um, parts of Asia where I was told it's not safe to go. I went and travelled to countries where I was told it's not not safe. Um, But I just knew that I needed to be there. And when I look back, my soul was going through its own initiation of like gathering all this information that I needed to be who I am now. Um, the, the path to unlocking my light language was not something I could have ever foreseen. And I loved that um, I saw all these healers, all these shamans, all these psychics. I was getting all this information, right? And I was like, what am I supposed to do with my life? I have no idea. And everything I like tried, I didn't like it. And so I know you're frothing human design as much as me. Yeah, so my three line was the experimentation phase, right? So I was trialing and erroring everything. I have had probably like 15 careers if you will Mm -hmm. and I then got a lot of backlash for that as well because of the time that we grew up in you know I'm in my mid-30s now and my parents were like you have to pick a career you can't just change jobs all the time you know um I actually have so many certifications so I studied and started many many any different careers it's not that I just dropped into them I studied them as well um but all of that knowledge really helps me now in the work that I do so it's absolutely perfect and although my primary soul gift is to channel light language I am obsessed with knowledge and understanding the basis of things so even yesterday I had a client and we're really diving deep into her nutrition because she's got um some skin issues and it's like oh, I've just got these new vitamins and I'm feeling sick. And I'm like, cool, let's um, start somewhere else because that's absolutely a waste of money. And so I get to live this varied life and help people with all the things that I learned on my own journey to heal my body from what you would call chronic illness because I suffered from many, many years with many different things and at the door with some of them. Um, I went through so many treatments with so many doctors and Western medicine, I would say like, I felt at the time that it failed me. But what I learned as I moved beyond that was actually that it was a learning. It was an understanding that the Western medicine was not the way for me to heal this particular thing. And I don't discount it either. I feel that there's a place for everything. And this is what I think is so important now when I am channeling light language. I'm actually channeling the frequency of the soul that I'm working with. And so I'm not channeling for me. Mm. I'm calling what that soul needs. A unique being has their own unique profile, their own unique needs. Your soul is not like 
anyone else mm. helps me to understand why I I needed to go through all of these experiences and see the duality of everything and learn and understand like there literally is not one shoe fits all, right? Yes. Every single being needs a different approach. And so I'm just going to take a sip of my cacao. Um, yeah, <laughs> I love that. That instantly made me think about while our journey is very different, they're very similar with that piece there with the there's no one size fits all which I learned through my role as an educator and trying to trying to improve outcomes for students inside a system that was trying to retrofit that concept into a no there is only one way to do this based system you know Mm -hmm. I just find that yeah that's really interesting essentially that's what I I do now with women in the business space is like I know that there's not one way to do business for each person it is completely individual and is completely unique it like your business is your sole expression like in in my version of business and the way that I do business like your business is you it is the expression of you your soul gifts your like your gifts your talents but also your fears and your challenges and all of that Mm-hmm. that is your business so you can't put one size fits all on that you can't put one process one strategy um yeah. but it's just funny that we've both come to that from very different very different ways yeah absolutely and this is the thing that I find interesting having conversations with people so again the line in me froths like learning and understanding everything to the fine details and so I will go really deep with people on like the intricacies of who they are and their experience. And this was always something I did, right? I remember being 20, 21 and you get to know people, right? And I'm trying to make friends because although I had friends, I never had like truly strong bonds with people. And I experienced a lot of my life being like, uh, and then feeling this deep sadness and often finding myself like sitting alone and crying and wondering like, why am I so alone? Why don't I understand people? Why don't I have any friends? (laughs) And so I would always like try to get to know people and ask them like about their life and about how they grew up. And people would say to me, you can't, you know, you can't ask those questions. Like, why do you want to know why? Like you're weird. Yeah. It took me a long time. I only discovered human design when I was 30, 29 or 30. Mm. And I was like, ah, okay, cool. So people with a line one profile, they actually want to know this and other people don't and they find it really overwhelming and really invasive and that's why I'm like I love human design and if we all knew this as kids or just would have a different level of understanding of people of like some people want to ask a million questions and that can be okay and you don't need to make it about you and you don't need to make them wrong for it right yeah um so I've got a friend who's also a line one and we just have these really long conversations about everything and going back to what I said like I love understanding people's journeys and where they came from and knowing everything about them this started very young and it I even find it now is very helpful because like you said someone can have this very different journey but we've come to the same conclusion Mm. and I also find that even going back to the very first thing you said about having these relationships where we are both mentor and mentee and we are um, friend and co-facilitator, like all these different roles. To me, that is the epitome of the 5D, of living a life where we are soul aligned. Yeah. And I have the same philosophy about business, like in the 5D realm, in that experience and when I say realm like we have that here on this earth right you and I are living a different experience than those who are still living the 3d experience and some people are sort of like teetering from 3d to 4d some sort of go 3d 5g and then back to 3d because they think that they're there but they haven't really figured it out yet and to me like when we all are thriving living in a higher vibration we will all be doing our own soul work and your soul work will show up like 
a business and business is just a 3D term for it, right? Because for every other planet that we live on, when you communicate with those beings, like they don't have businesses. They don't have um, these restrictions. They just are who they are, Mm. right? And the journey is to discover who you are as a soul and to help other people with who you are and receive everything you need from everyone else. Yeah. And so it's really interesting this timeline that we're in as well because, like I said, I'd never envisioned that I could be here, that I would be channeling light language. Like if you'd asked me this 15 years ago, I would have told you you're crazy, number one. That sounds insane. Mm -hmm. And I used to go to a yoga class and think like, honestly what I'm doing here with these weird hippies yeah and that was a yoga class like I'm a yoga teacher now and I taught yoga in America you know 11 12 years ago and when I first went though I was like crazy hippies and then I went to a kirtan and it was next level I was like oh crazy hippies what am I doing here like I I truly was like I don't know why I keep coming to these situations where I think everyone is crazy yeah. And why I keep going, like, why, why do I keep going there? Yeah. But my soul was obviously leading me when my little egoic human mind just couldn't fathom what I needed and couldn't yeah. understand. And I remember having a psychic friend tell me years ago, she's like, you are, you are psychic. You will be one day. And I was like, what does that even mean? Like does one, just one day become psychic. <laughs> that makes no sense you're on crack but I always used to think that's so cool I wish I could do that like I wish I had access to that and what I learned and discovered and I teach this inside my programs is and you would have heard me say this is that we're all channels and actually when we keep wondering how to do something or thinking it's so cool or thinking that other people can do it we're actually pushing it away because we're creating this level of disbelief right inside our channel that like that's outside of me Mm. rather than going like no every single one of us is just a little spark of light yeah and when we shed all of the shit all of the layers we come back to the truth of who we truly are yeah yeah I love that um because that also ties in with um, a couple of things like that, that idea that like we push away the things we actually want that are meant for us because we make it such a big deal, you know, mm-hmm. we make it like, like you said, it's, it's outside of us. It's over there. And I have to do all this work to get to it. And like, I can't possibly do that. And that person can, cause this, that, and the other, and we make it such a big deal that then our body is like, oh my God, if it's that big deal, like that's not safe. Like, I don't want that near me. Like that can just stay over there because like, it's such a big deal, you know? And we like, we repel that thing that we most want to be doing or receiving or showing up as in our life. And I think one of my favorite things, and I, like so many things, cause again, <laughs> your detailed knowledge, but one of the key things that stuck with me when I first was in your program was, um, you know, we were going through another cycle of, of like scarcity and like, Oh, we've been here before. And, you know, it's like on that cycle. And, um, and I was journeying through that. Like, I feel like every single time, like clients start to come in and I celebrate it or I get excited about it. They just suddenly disappear. And you gave me this like key of, of being excited about it and celebrating, but also the energy of, of course, you know, like of neutralizing it and be like, yeah, of course, like, of course that happened. And since then, that is like my default. It is my default. I go to with everything big or small, you know, like, um, I'll caravan park. I needed some milk and it was like, it was the day it was going out. So they gave me all the milk in the fridge for free, you know? And I was like, <laughs> of course I get free milk, but like bigger things too, like all the synchronicities. Like I went for a walk and ran into a group of women doing yoga on the top of the hill and they invited me in and she just happens to need to build a business. And I was like, well, of course I met you while I was going for a walk, you know? <laughs> and just that that energy of it just yeah, makes such a difference. And it really does 
bring you to that state of neutrality around it, which helps, I find, helps your nervous system calibrate or recalibrate to that and be like, yeah, it is safe for me to receive that now because it, it's normal. It's normal. And you can do that with anything. Relationship, 100%. love, clients, money, all of it. Yeah. And that's I'm always talking to people like you're not just here to regulate your nervous system as a starting point, like as a fucking bare minimum. That was the big key piece for me to step out of a life lived within chronic pain, chronic illness. Actually, another key piece was like my soul was detached from my body, which is why when I look back every single day of my life, I wanted to leave this earth. Every single day I fought this internal battle to not do something dangerous to take my life. And I used to always call myself a daredevil and like an adrenaline junkie because I was doing all this crazy shit from such a small age. Like I would jump off cliffs that were way too high for me, um, to, like into water, right? But like without any fear for my life because I didn't want to be here. And it was like this battle to want to stay because everything around me said, this is what being a human is, right? I grew up in this very 3D experience. And <clears throat> the point of this, because we love our many gen trails. Yep. Oh, I, <laughs> oh, I <laughs> trails. I'm like, what was the starting point? It, always, it always comes back. But we were talking about um, nervous system and it's not just nervous about system, yes. Yeah, Thank yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Kristen, <laughs> for being a line six. You're a yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, to step out of all that, the, this absolute bare minimum is to regulate your nervous system, right? Is to learn how to breathe, how to be in your body. And then for me, which isn't many people, but there are a few souls here who I see. And because of the experience that I went through, I tend to attract these people, right? Because we attract the people who are us, who have lived the same experience as us. I tend to bring in people who are experiencing a life where they they don't understand why they're alive. They don't want to be alive. They're experiencing um, either, you know, sickness or ill health or something where they're struggling. They don't, they, they're they chopping and changing careers because they're trying to find some reason to, you know, be fulfilled. And the other key thing is they're usually living with entities or transmuting pain for other people because that's one of my gifts but I was doing it in a darker way. So I was taking people's energy through my body and transmuting it. And often the entities would be stuck and it was very traumatic on my body. And so then I was even more sick. Um, so that's kind of related to that. And when I reconnected my soul, that helped. Yeah. But many of these other things that most people are experiencing is because they're not regulated in their nervous system. And then that next step, is the recalibration, right? It's like, okay, I'm calm. I understand this is my reality that I'm living. Cool. I've created all of this. Now what would I desire to create as the next level? And you start to open up to that. And then you start to receive one of those desires, even minimal, as you said, oh, I just got all this milk. And yeah. the old, the patterning, the subconscious that you've lived with for 10, 20, 30, 40, however many years you've been alive in this life, plus all of your ancestral wounds, all of your past life traumas, living deeply in your body until you clear them, they get activated and they go, oh, not worthy, not worthy of receiving. Nope, 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 nope. Take it back. Even if it's something tiny, like receiving milk, some people literally cannot receive a coffee being paid for by another person. They go, oh, no, I couldn't possibly have other people buy me a coffee. No, that's no, that's not fair. That's not equal. Actually, that's a trauma response. You can absolutely receive every single thing you desire and every single time you push anything away, even if it's five cents, you're pushing away and creating more lack of receiving, right? So the recalibration is to go like, exactly like you said, like, okay, how do I breathe into my nervous system? Of course I get to receive this and you keep doing it again and again. And every single time you do that, every single time you breathe into your nervous system and go, oh yeah, amazing. That's exactly what I desire. Yeah. That's exactly how I what, you know, wish to receive this thing. You actually recalibrate to that next level so that you can hold more you can receive more 
And this is how you expand, not only in your life, but in your business, right? Because I know that's all of your clients are, are here. And most of your listeners, I would dare say, are women in business who are wondering, like, how do I have the capacity mm-hmm. to manage my family and build a business? Like, how is it possible? Because we weren't shown that. We weren't shown as women that you can have a family and you can build a business. Usually it was either or. I know most women that we've grown up with, most mothers have had to let go of their career. And it's still a massive thing right now. Like I saw a post just yesterday in a Facebook group of this woman going, you know, I'm about to go on maternity leave for 12 months and I've always been the higher wage earner. And now I won't be earning a wage, just the maternity thing. And my husband's going to be, you know, putting in the majority. And so his money's covering the bills and I'm covering the food. And how am I supposed to go and like, you know, maybe get a coffee with friends or enjoy my life without feeling so guilty that my husband's paying for everything and working really hard. And it was really interesting to read that comment section. Yeah, it would have been. 50% saying like, what if you shift your perspective and think, how is your husband not guilty that he's going to work every day instead of staying home with you and helping raise your child, right? And the other 50% is like, uh, basically, in the same vein of like, it's not possible to do it all. Yeah. You can't, you can't have both. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, it is still so prevalent in our society that women are told you cannot have both. Yeah. To be a mother or to even just be a dog mom, like to, you know, run a career and have something else outside of you. Mm. We have to build that capacity within us because we can hold anything we desire. Yeah, There are people out there who have multi-million dollar businesses, who have families, Mm. who have a luxury lifestyle, who have everything that they desire. Yeah. If they can, anyone can. Yes. We stop putting people on a pedestal because every single one of us has access to exactly the same amount of receivership. Mm. yeah but, um oh we could go <laughs> so far down that rabbit hole with that comment section but I think just like yeah just that that idea that and for men too because you know um that's been part of my journey and my family journey with my husband um that there is a big conversation do we want to go here yeah we'll go here there's a big conversation, you know, around like um, the sacrifice women make, right? Yeah. But there is an equal sacrifice going on for the men who are going out to provide. And yes, like that is the masculine role to provide and protect. And um, that is a big piece. But also like they do have to sacrifice a lot for their mental well-being by the way the world is now how much they have to be away from the family unit to do that now Mm -hmm. that's a whole nother thing um but just something i think yeah it needs to be more of the conversation like that's that's basically what my husband and i our focus together is is like how can we how can we connect families back together how can we bring families home together because so many people in our world like even for us right now my husband is away He's been gone for two weeks, you know, and the the stress that that puts on a family, like we've seen families break down and fall apart from that stress and the guilt equally for men where, you know, they are, and this, this ties in so well with the nervous system regulation piece, because what what's happening is the husband or whoever is that person going away to be the provider, it doesn't have to be man, woman, whatever, it doesn't really matter, it's the same thing. But if there's one person that is going away, but this particularly happens for men a lot with their well-being, like they're away, they're working really hard, and then they're missing out on their children, they're missing out on their wife, they're missing out on their social networks, because it is very isolating, that kind of work. Um, They're living in tiny little boxes, they're not getting access to the sunlight and all of that stuff. And then they come home and they feel this pressure because you're not here and there's resentment building between the two people inside that relationship. So 
if you aren't both doing that work to regulate your nervous system, you're going to turn that on each other, right? hundred percent. You're going to turn that against each other when it's not actually about either of you. It's about the situation that you're in. And you're so right about this piece around, we need to be having the conversation that actually you, you can have it all. You can have the financial stability, the financial independence, the fulfillment, the purpose, um, without any burnout or sacrifice. Like it, it is actually possible, especially now with the ways that we can work and the way that you can turn your soul gifts into a business. Like there's never been a better time for that ever in whatever way you choose to go, whether you, you know, you want to find a product to, to represent, or you want to create your own product, or you have a service-based business, like whatever it is, like there are so many ways to do it. And I know that a lot of people would have just heard you say like, there's people out there with massive six, seven figure businesses and they have a family and they have this. And I know for a fact, cause I used to do this. They're like, yeah, but they're not happy. They're mm-hmm. rich, but they're not happy. I bet their family's not happy. I bet they don't actually love. I bet they fight all the time. I bet they wish they would divorce. I bet this, I bet that, you know, because that's the program. Right, yep. that's programming that's been put on top of us to keep us stuck where we are, to stop us from striving for more because we have all of these programs and fears and beliefs that, well, if I if I become rich, I'll have to sacrifice something else because mm-hmm. you can't have it all. <clears throat> so yeah, I love that. There's so much work to be done around this. You can have one or the other. It's this or that. Yeah. And it's not this or that, it's yes and. It's yes, and yeah. if you're doing this work to calibrate your nervous system, to heal the wounds, to, you know, God, past life and uh, an <laughs> ancestral wounding, like, like just when that was brought into my world, I was like, what the hell? If you don't know this, how the hell are you supposed to like overcome it? Because it's stuff that's going on in the background. You have no idea. You ha- You cannot mm-hmm. literally comprehend that there is a reason why every time this opportunity comes up, you block yourself, even though it's something you really want. It's like, yeah, well, you probably like died like three lifetimes ago or an ancestor, like, you know, something happened in your ancestral lineage and that's why your money reality is like this and you're in the same cycle over and over again. Yeah, that work is um, is wild, but it's also very expansive and it's also very cool to delve into. Yeah. It really does shift you very very quickly if you can yep. put all those pieces together. Absolutely. And this is something I found like I started out um, in my whirlwind of the path to channeling. I definitely would say I was in China. I remember it vividly. Um, it was basically like I think I had sort of like a, an early spiritual awakening years before that because I was traveling I was understanding that there was something more right I started doing yoga when I was 19 and I started meditating every day twice a day when I was 20 at 9 50 and 4 a.m because I would do 10 minutes before bed and 10 minutes when I woke up and that was just what I started with I was like I'm just gonna sit here and I'm gonna do 10 minutes and I'll just breathe and like count to 30 in my head and then count to 30 again and count to 30 again because back in this day like there was no process on meditation I just heard the word meditation I was like I'm gonna try that And so there was some remnants of this kind of spiritual awakening, right? I knew that there was something more. But when I was 25 or 26, one of I know where I was. I don't know how old I was. 25 or 26. I was sitting on my bed in China. They had put me up. Um, I got this teaching position. So I was teaching um, in a private school, teaching English in the mountains. It was cold. Um, They put me on the 21st floor because they would give you an apartment. It was just high rises. The whole city was high rises. It was very isolating because I had previously lived in Vietnam where quite a lot of people spoke English, even though it was a very small town, there was a big school community. So all the teachers spoke English. I went out with them. Like we would do, you know, the coffee shop at night to have tea and Jenga. Like every day was fun and interactive. I went on all these trips and I had people to become friends with because the English um, that they spoke was enough that I could actually like have conversations When I went to China, there was about five teachers that spoke English and the most they could speak was like, how are you going? Um, Do you want to play badminton with me? But they worked six days a week because that was the expectation in China. So there was only one day a week that you could go about. 
And I'd been there for three months and I was so, so isolated, so alone, had literally no one to talk to um, on a different time zone. So I didn't often speak to people back home. And because I'd been already living overseas for three or four years at this point, I had very few connections back home. I'd become a different person, right? I didn't talk to anyone that I knew. And I was meditating and I had this epiphany and I literally saw a vision of myself living this whole other life. And I didn't really understand at the time what was happening, but I just knew I was like, I cannot be here. And I was in a six month contract and I had to pay to leave the contract. It was like a whole thing, but I got shown that I was going to help people heal their body because the six years prior to this, I had been healing my own body through the studies of like nutrition. I'd been researching, I'd been reading books and journals and been integrating and practicing things as I went along. So trying different foods and changing the way I ate and so I had gotten to a a certain point in my wellness and when I look back what I had done is I had freed my body of enough of the burden of the illnesses that my soul had a chance to come through I had sat and meditated religiously for five years twice a day that my soul had enough space to talk to me right because I was so heavily heavily burdened with the sickness and all the things that I couldn't even connect to anything until that moment and so I was like that's it I moved back to Australia I started my nutrition degree midway through my nutrition degree I'm in psychology counseling it's a whole thing right got a lot of people that are coming in for eating disorders and all these things and there's a process that you have to take people through you have a counseling understanding of like how to um correspond with those people in a way that's safe and then you have to give them a meal plan and I was just like this is incredible, but there's something missing. There is something missing. And I went to this coaching seminar weekend thing and I was like blown away, personal development. And they said, you're like, you're meant to be a life coach. I'm like, what? And I'm like, you are just like amazing at this. Like I found my purpose. They do this find your purpose game, right? Where you like channel your purpose, you write it down on a yellow card and they hide them all over the room and they blindfold everyone. And they're like, okay, go and find your purpose. And like, I don't even know, cause I was just so like, whatever in the moment I've got the blindfold on, they say, go, I've taken a few steps, boom, put my hand down, picked it up within about five seconds. They're like, that was the fastest anyone never got it. And I'm like, yes, I'm in the game. I'm amazing. <laughs> because the competition part of me yeah, wanted yeah. to just win the game. Yeah. <laughs> I recognize you. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so At the end of it, they've told me, you've got to be a life coach. And I received all this validation, Mm. right? Because four years prior to that, I'd always sit and listen to people. They'd unload their stories on me. I was always the person that people would unload their life story. Even to this day, I still have people, I meet them, random spots. And they, within two minutes, they tell me their life story. And they're like, oh my God, I'm, I'm so sorry. Like I've never told anyone that before. I don't know why I spoke to you. I'm like, it's totally fine. Yeah. And then we go from there. I'm like, by the way, this is my purpose. Like, duh. yeah. Anyway, so when they said that, I was like, oh, validation, because I hadn't healed my nervous system. Mm. I should be a life coach. Amazing. Duh. So I go, I do the life coach training. Then they're like, you're so incredible. We want you to be one of our life coaches, you know, um, one of our master coaches. And I was like, oh, yeah, amazing. That sounds yeah. perfect. Look so I'm doing the title. thing. I've been in the, yeah. I'd been in the coaching for, six months a year, everyone's saying how amazing it is and all these things. And I'm seeing how amazing it is and how life-changing it is and working with a kinesiologist. This is when I started seeing psychics. I started seeing shamans, all the things. And I was still like, there's something missing. Mm. There is something missing and I don't know what it is, but all of the mental processes, all of the timeline therapy, you know, I'd study the timeline therapy, the NLP. I'm like, all of this all of the talk therapy that I learned in my nutrition degree, all of the food plans and the meal plans and the workout, everything. I'm like, it doesn't, it's not making a difference. Mm. I still felt depressed every day. I still experienced panic attacks. This was three, four years into this journey. I was coaching people, others having these amazing results, people exploding in their business beyond me all these things I'm like okay I can help everyone else 
but not myself. Mm. Like, what the fuck is wrong with me? Why am I stuck? And it was at this point that I started having financial struggles, whereas I never had that before. Mm. I had always made a lot of money from being a teenager. I'd run businesses and had a job. And it wasn't until I was like three, four years into my personal development journey that I was like, fuck, like I have so many outgoings that my incomings are just like not covering it. Mm. I started to get myself into debt and I was like, what the, like, what is actually going on? Like I'm now struggling financially. I'm struggling in relationships, but I'm helping everyone else get the life they want. Yeah. So there must be something right with me, but I don't know what's wrong with me. And it was literally a process of like actually stepping away from life that helped me find who I was. Mm. I had to let it all go Mm. and realize that I didn't know anything. (laughs) And I spent months living on this organic health retreat, just like figuring out who I was. And through that process, things started to come in and it was like little bits and pieces activated but it still was like another two years until things really shifted and I was you know when I when I talk to people about this all all the time I'm like we all have our own soul journey like we can't rush anything right I had all this information I had all this knowledge I had all these things I was doing all the things I was going here meeting all the people but my soul had to just like follow its own timeline yeah And I had to just be okay with that. And I had to come to a place where I'm like, my soul knows better than me. My human mind is like, when am I going to get the things? Yes. When is it going to work out? I'm this age. And like, you know, tapping the clock, like you're supposed to have this by now and supposed to have that. And other people have been doing it less time than me and they've figured it out. Yeah. And getting to a point where I'm like, okay, just fucking surrender. And I was like sitting on the beach crying, like, I don't know what is my life kind of thing. Like, yeah. Um, and it was in that moment that it was so slowly and easily things started to shift because I just let, let it all go. I let the the human part of me surrender mm. and you know, piece by piece, kind of like unlock that. And <clears throat> The point of the epiphany story was when we talk, you were talking about like past life and ancestral. Yeah. I was 26 when that experience happened. Right. And I've told you the follow through from that. It was another six years before I heard about past life healing and ancestral wounds. And I saw someone and they cleared ancestral wounds. No, five years, five years. I was 30, 31. But then it was, still like another three of like deep ancestral past life healing that I went through before I even had any capacity to understand that I could do it myself. Yeah. Because I was going to all these people that were like, oh yeah, I'm this and I can do this for you. And I was like, amazing. Thank you. And like putting them on pedestals. And this then all circulates back to what you were saying before. Like we see other people and we go, oh no, but they must not be happy or they must not have this or they must have that. Like, actually no there are so many people now who have figured it out and understood that actually you can have anything you desire and you can be happy Mm -hmm. create anything you want and also we're all freaking unique channels yeah and so we have the power we are very powerful beings we have the power to unlock our own past life wounds to unlock our own ancestral wounds And maybe in the beginning, we need someone to like help us or show us the way. But I think that's the key. And that's what I'm very passionate about now, right? Is like empowering other people to go, hey, you just need to learn and understand your channel. And then you can do all of this yourself. And you'll still go and see other people, of course. Like we still do things with other people. I still to this day do things because I'm drawn to it, but I'm not going and doing it because of some reason outside of me I'm like oh my soul's telling me to go and see this human or go and have this experience not like oh my head's telling me that would be a good idea yes yeah oh there's so many things there's so many things (laughs) there's so many okay um 
I'm just quickly going to jump in <clears throat> when you're saying, oh, what was the point of this um, story? Um, the point was that it's what the people listening to this podcast need to hear. Yep. Because it's what I needed to hear. And it literally keeps popping up in my field now. Like literally this morning I was, I was um, like catching up on a replay from a container that I'm in. And that was the theme of, of the session was, you know, this idea that if you can feel it, you can receive it. It's, it's, it's inevitable. It's already there, but there is this very unique specific training ground being created for you and you have to be able to hold that yes that is mine it is inevitable it it exists in the quantum field so it it is there and being able to be like okay but it's i'm just gonna leave it there it's okay it's there i'm holding the frequency of that at the same time that my reality is saying you're delusional right and just allowing like the the journey that it takes for that to actually arrive instead of instead of being like oh it's not working oh it's not happening oh this thing oh i'm still in scarcity looking at it as like your leverage you know looking at it as like oh this is my training ground so when i get there i'm gonna have all of this to draw on i'm gonna have all of this to teach back to to other people and you know we all have that very unique training ground that's being curated for us we have like you said we have our very unique soul essence a very unique way that we are designed to channel and this is where human design can be so illuminating for you um because you don't have to know your human design because it is your energetic blueprint so you are doing it anyway but it can be helpful for you i've found in just like yes validating but also being like oh okay that's why this i do it this way that's why i experience this and the number of times i go into my chart and i know i've like messaged you and be like oh my god i just found this like it, reading my gene keys i'm like i've been doing that my whole life you know it'll be like oh you're here for to do this thing i'm like yeah because i did that like ten thousand times in my previous career and now it's the whole you know, it's the whole focal point of my business that I'm building that I didn't even do intentionally. So yeah, so if you are listening to this, and you are in that space, whenever you hear someone say, well, you just have to trust and surrender. And you're like, middle finger to that bullshit. Just know (laughs) that it is, it is very, very important. It is like, it is a key piece. If you feel like you have been doing the work, and you've been doing the tools and you've been implementing and you've been growing and healing and it's still not arriving or it's not working for you the way that you are expecting it to there'd be a few different things happening but one of the key things will be that you are grabbing onto it too tightly and so you're so focused on this here and like making this happen that you're not making yourself available for what's right here that will get you to that same end result so you're completely Mm -hmm. like missing Mm -hmm. that over here and that i know that's been in my own experience i've held on to things so tightly that there was this completely other thing available for me but i was so focused on this thing here that i had to have i had to do it i had to do it this way it had to be done like created through this that this whole other opportunity that probably would have collapsed that timeline a lot faster for me. I was like, didn't even see it. I didn't even know it was there. Mm -hmm. So, so that's one piece. Um, This idea that you have to control everything and control every part of the process. um, You need to let that go (laughs) from a recovering (laughs) control freak. It's like, it's a shadow inside my jinkies in my human design, right? Like um, it is not, it's not easy at the beginning and a lot of the women I speak to it's like we understand the concept of trust and surrender and we're like yes I'm happy to trust and surrender as long as I'm still in control like as long as I still get to you know do all the things and so being able to this is the nervous system calibration piece it is the energetic piece it is the spirit and healing piece it's it's all of it's why you can't do one without the other you have to be able to dip in and out and grab what you need at the time and have the discernment for that. Um, But it is very much that being able to be like, okay, this is, this is the vision. 
Like this is the vision. This is what I feel in my soul. Like, well, this is what I feel is available for me right now. Like whether it's a specific figure in your business or, you know, a specific career or job or relationship or whatever it is you're trying to create. It's like, this is what I feel is available to me. Love it. Amazing. And I'm just going to leave that there. And I'm going <laughs> to tune into the frequency of that. And I'm going to try as much as possible to live in that experience now while my reality is saying no, <clears throat> and just know that it is going to happen. It is mine, it is inevitable, but I don't need to know how it's gonna happen. I don't know. I don't need to know when it's going to arrive or how it's going to arrive. I need to just keep taking the aligned action and, you know, there's different ways that we're meant to do that and listening to your story like the number of times you've used your authority of like responding you know and like um you're sacral aren't you you're sacral yeah Manny Jen so just like no yeah. if it's a yes or a no <laughs> and following that and I I was I was wondering I wanted to ask you in that because I know that I did this for a long time I did not live my design for a long time I was very um <laughs> conditioned to not follow my manifesting generator authority and strategy, but how often we, we just do what someone else says is right for us because we're yeah. good at it, right? Like, oh, you should be a life coach because you're good at it. Oh, you should be a master coach because you're so good at that. And a little bit of your ego comes in like, oh, okay. Someone's told me I'm good at that. And there, there is a balance. Like you do need to, you do need to be like, oh, what are people projecting onto me? Like, what, what are they coming to me for? And, and, and follow that. But also at the same time being really um, discerning in, okay, there, I am good at that, but is that actually what I'm here for? Is that actually what I should be doing next? Or is there there's something else? I know, like, I was a very good teacher. Um, I have yeah. a teacher blueprint, so no surprise. But I didn't love it. Yeah, and it wasn't that I didn't love being in the room with children and teaching children. I absolutely love that. That was never my problem. It was all the other stuff, all the yeah. other stuff outside the classroom. So, but I didn't like, I just ignored that for so long, for yeah. so, so long. And, um, you know, there's this thing with many gems and generators. Like we have a lot of energy, you know, we have, we have motors and we can create a lot of energy. So we can work longer, but we can also be doing functional burnout at the same time. We're like, we're doing all the things. And a lot of us are high achievers, right? We identify with these past lives as high achievers and we did all the things and, you know, we were com competitive and all this and that. And on the surface, like, oh my gosh, they've got it all together. They're doing all the things. They're so successful. And we don't even realize that we are living in functional burnout. We're functioning, but our mind, our body, our spirit is like dying on the inside. And then our body's like, no more, have this chronic illness, have this disease, have this breakdown, you know? And um, I think that's something really, yeah, for particularly for generators and mani manifesting generators to be aware of, like just because you can work a lot doesn't mean you should and just because mm -hmm. you are good at something or someone is telling you you're really good at it you really need to know how you're designed to make decisions and how you're designed to to yeah. move forward in your life you know because everyone is designed to do that in very different ways even you and i we're both manifesting generators um we're both here to respond but how we then make the decision is different as well because i have an emotional authority so i i get the sacral yes or no but then i still have to have this wave of like going through you know ask myself multiple times in the highs and lows like there's a whole thing so yeah, yeah. i just talked about a lot of stuff but basically yeah. being able to support you <laughs> the trust and surrender is very important it's and I guess, what would your advice be for someone who's like, okay, I, I don't think I believe in the whole trust and surrender, Jesus take the wheel thing. But at the same time, what I'm doing isn't working. So if I wanted to be open to this, yeah. where do I start? Hmm. 
it's really interesting because when you were talking about, um, you know, being like, oh yeah, trust and surrender, but I also want to be in control. That was me as well, a hundred percent. And um, it's fascinating to me how very different lives we've lived as Manigen because manifestors do initiate. And so I was constantly initiating new cycles every year or two in all different careers. Um, but also listening to other people more than myself. Mm. So my biggest key piece that I learned from me was you said how to trust and surrender was actually like how to come home to myself. Mm. And so to step away. So when I got to the peak, you talked about functional burnout. Like I went so beyond burnout. I used to have maybe two hours of energy a day, like that I could master to get out of bed for some time. And then I would spend two, three weeks in bed and like, I couldn't move. And I was so, so exhausted. And I spent four months, like literally out of society, like completely alone, just sleeping, resting, cooking meals, chilling, channeling, reading. And it was really hard to do, right? I was going to say that would have been society so says, difficult. <laughs> yeah, that you need to do things. And then the part of me, like my body's like, oh, fuck, I'm so bored. This sucks. I need to go and do things. And it was like a daily battle to go, no, don't do things. You yeah. have to step back. But it was like that was my soul telling me that you need to be out you need to be separate. So I feel like the first key of trusting, surrendering is just like tune in to what do you really need and sit with that. And you're not going to potentially get it instantly, right? Like it took me a long time to learn the lesson. In the game of people that didn't get the lesson on the first time or the second or the thousands, I win. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm, I was called by a psychic when I was 30, um, a late bloomer. She said, she's like, you've really figured many things out. She's like, but I do see you in your late thirties and you look like you've figured it out. It's going to take you a long time though. Like you're a bit behind other people. And at the time I was so offended. I was like, what the fuck is wrong with me? Yeah. But realizing like age is meaningless. Yeah. Right. Because there are people that eight that are eighty and a hundred mm-hmm. that pass away that haven't figured it out. Mm-hmm. Because there is no figuring it out. You're one tiny speck right now on your soul's timeline. And if you think that the eighty years that you're currently going to be alive is important, it's not. Mm-hmm. It's literally meaningless. All you need to do is just flow and like have fun and you think I want to do all these things and I want to blah 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 in my life but like actually your soul's already made contracts before you come here every single thing you're going to do yeah so when you really get that it becomes easier to trust and surrender because you're like okay everything's predetermined so why am I forcing and forcing and forcing and forcing yeah something that probably isn't for me yeah. Or something that may be coming in 10 years or 20 years because society has told me that I need to do it at this age. Yeah. And what really happened, what really helps is like I spend a lot of time in countries and cultures um, and places where there is no society. Mm. People who just live on the land with each other and they, you know, build homes and they have their children and they work in community to like, these people are feeding, these people are singing. And I spent a lot of time in remote and isolated places where I got to see like, what the fuck am I doing in Australia trying to like force this life? Yeah. And these people are just sitting here chilling and eating good food and they're singing and they're dancing and having fun with each other. And I'm like, why, why am I so driven to need to succeed in something? Mm. And it really broke down a lot of my way of being and even now like I still see people that are you know in the same industries that are us that are like but you can be a millionaire and have all the things I'm like cool if that's your path yeah but you don't need to be a millionaire I've got friends who are living luxe lifestyles 
and have every single thing they need and they don't have much money at all yeah because people give it to them and people pay them for the experiences people pay for all the things that they go on to mm. so you can be completely prosperous without having that much physical money in your account especially in the world we're moving into like at some point money's going to be irrelevant mm. i heard bashar channeling and it was said that money will be gone mm. by 2040 to 2050 he said on the human timeline there will be no money mm. and he said what will be is your unique energy that you share with the world yeah he said the exchange will be energy yeah and i have heard that from so many people i've heard that from all my guides and i have lived that in the last year and a half i have lived the experience where a lot of my exchanges my energy and i have been taken on holidays and trips and being given things that were worth tens of thousands of dollars and i didn't work for it yeah i gave my energy for it right yeah and i feel like that's when you know that you're trusting and surrendering because shit starts to get really cool and you're like oh, okay yeah. Yeah. and then it's a new process of going like okay this is great. How do I recalibrate my nervous system that this yeah. is safe and I'm allowed to have this and it's not a bad thing because other people are going like, oh, you always get given things. Oh, blah, blah, blah. You shouldn't be mooching off people because that's their stories, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's a whole other thing. That's a whole other thing, that's yeah. That's the next piece of the process. <laughs> Cultural programming and all the different things. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Mm. So I love, that. I love the difference too because I love the difference between society and community. I, I love that when you're talking about, oh, there is no society, but there is definitely community. Like, I yeah. just, I just want to highlight that piece. Like people just think about that. Just think about what that actually means. Like, because we think of society as like, you know, this, amazing thing and you know if you're outside of society you'll be alone and those primal parts of us kick in I'm like oh my god if you're not in the tribe you'll die it's like no you just go and make your own tribe that is about community and it isn't about the hierarchies and the power struggles and all of that stuff so I love that that piece and um which is why I love travel so much right because you you need perspective like yeah. you need perspective and travel is such a great way to receive perspective. Like even, um, obviously I'm going to go back to my teaching experience, right? Like there's this big thing around reading and writing and nap plan and the amount of time wasted in teaching kids how to write a fucking story, right? Like how to like physically write a story and this section and this section, and this is the order of it. like, cool, but it means fuck all if they have no perspective. And they have no world knowledge so they have no ideas to put inside these little boxes of structure that you're trying to get them to write so that's exactly the going, point right that's yeah exactly yeah exactly the point of school yeah yes exactly. we want to fill your mind with bullshit yeah. and give you ridiculous ways of doing things against who you are as a human being so that you understand this is the way it's meant to be so that you cannot wake up to your own power yeah yes like Yes, that's a whole nother hour and a half <laughs> podcast episode right there. But just there's like, so many things we can talk about with oh, the gene keys could. and the, yeah. how oh, that's yeah. connected to the ancestors yeah. and how we that did actually uh, talk about any of these little notes I had, which is right. fun. I love it. It's amazing. Uh, but yeah, that that perspective I think is really important. And so if you're feeling like if, if you're feeling like it's hard or you're stuck, or you're like I don't really know. Um, yeah, finding ways to get some perspective is really, it's really the key. It's, it's really the key to, to everything, I think, having perspective. And I think something important for people to remember is like if you're in a situation where you have um, maybe you've got a busy job and you don't have a lot of finances or maybe you are a parent with not a lot of money or you're on welfare or you're, you find yourself in a situation where you cannot physically travel right now, you can gain so much perspective by just taking yourself out alone into yeah. whatever is the closest piece of nature 
to you. Yes. Yeah. Right. Or even if you're immobilized, like if you're someone who's maybe like in a wheelchair or is suffering with chronic illness or chronic pain and you are immobilized, like when I was in that situation, I was watching YouTube mm. and like, I had traveled before that, but at that moment, it was almost like the travel was irrelevant because I was so stuck in what I was experiencing. I couldn't even see a way out. So I went on YouTube and was watching different videos. And there is so much online now that we have access to. Like we're in a world where you can you can travel another country through VR. Like it's possible. Yeah. So think outside the box and know that you can get perspective even if maybe you think that your circumstances are limiting you to not get the the perspective that you feel that you should have yeah yeah I also want to touch on there too because it came up before and that I kind of went somewhere else um <clears throat> but that I can't remember what you're saying but I want to come back to that going and being on your own when you when you talked about taking yourself out of the world right mm -hmm. how important that is because a, a lot of the um a lot of the things that come up for me with the women I work with inside their business is um content right like creating content and um like finding my voice and so Number one, if you want to find your voice, and I heard this the other day, and I was like, fucking yes. If you want to find your voice, open your mouth and speak. Like, yeah. that's how you find your voice. You open your mouth and you start speaking about whatever the fuck you want to speak about. Like, don't try and, again, getting out of our head and into our mm -hmm. heart, right? Into our body. Like, stop trying to think your way through yeah. it and feel your way through it. So I heard that. And I was like, that's amazing. And also when you're talking about soul contracts, because in this training that I did, and it was with Emma Dunwoody around how you use human design within your business, she was talking about like, you know, you, you have specific people you're contracted to work with, decided for you by the universe. So why the fuck do you care so much about what people think about what you're saying? Because it's already decided. You've already got the people you're meant to be here and impact and work with and change the lives of already decided but they can't find you because you're not opening your mouth and speaking you're not yeah. making yourself visible because you're too busy worrying about how do i speak to everybody that you're not saying anything of <clears throat> um not real value it's not about that but of truth right of your truth the truth that you're here to to share so when and you I when you said about like taking yourself out that's so important because um again you know people will ask me because i talk about a lot about like i don't plan my content it just comes to me the ideas just come to me and like yes have a defined throat i like you know i have a teaching blueprint all of that stuff but the point is i make space to hear what my soul wants to say you know yeah. i make the space for it i go and be quiet i meditate i walk i you know, and I make the space to listen to it and to be able to hear it. I, I remove a lot of noise intentionally, you know, through my devices, through what I watch. I've removed a lot of the noise and the distraction so that I can hear what does my soul want to say. And then I can work on building the courage and confidence to open my mouth and share that. And that's it. That's it. That's all I do for my content. Like, that's it. That's as simple as it needs to be yeah and that's the thing is people make this so complicated but it's not it's literally like take yourself out of the world spend time alone when you spend time alone I was like oh, found this thing called meditation when I was 19 I'll do that I'll do 10 minutes and 10 minutes and then I you know bring in the discipline because we need to have the masculine right we've got to balance yeah. that so I had the discipline I'm gonna, I'm gonna do 10 minutes and 10 minutes I'm gonna commit to that and then I, you know, was quiet enough to hear the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And eventually one day I was so quiet for so many months that I channeled a whole fucking program yeah. and, you know, my prosperity pillars was channeled sitting on the beach one day with my guides are like, boom, here's this training. You're going to teach this. And I was like, Ooh, who am I to teach this? Wow, wow, stories. Yeah. But bit by bit, 
you get more and more and then things get bigger and bigger. And like you talked about the soul contracts, like, yeah, you just have to keep keep giving yourself space to receive the soul nudges and then you take action on those and then you just do that again. You give yourself space, you receive the nudge, you take some action and you let go of the outcome because we can never know the outcome. Yeah, That's yeah. the thing I had to learn is like, I think, oh, it might look a specific way, but like I had no idea who was going to show up to that program. Mm-hmm. I had no idea if anyone would because I had created from my human egoic space programs previously in the three or four years I'd been coaching and never had anyone sign up. I'd have people inquire and they go, oh my God, yes, I'm in. Da, da, da. And then nothing would ever happen. Yeah. And I was like, cool, this is fucked. I'm only getting clients from the franchise that I'm paying money to receive clients. And then they would work with me the whole thing, say how amazing it all was, but they wouldn't resign. I'm like, hmm. And I had to learn, like, I was creating that. Super fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just literally like I see it as this little pyramid, like, Make the space, get the download, take action. Make the space, get the download, take action. And you just keep doing that. You just keep doing that. And you just eventually one day you'll look back and be like, oh, I got a lot of the things that I wanted, even though I wanted those things. Things that I thought I wanted three years ago, I literally don't care about them anymore. I used to be like, oh my God, I'm going to be this millionaire in this luxury house, like all these things. And like all of those things would still be amazing, but I'm not like, oh, I need all those things like to give me validation and worth. Mm. I am perfectly content just floating through life and doing my thing. And like, I love the people around me. I love the people I work with. I'm just like, this is fun. I wonder what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah. And each day I wake up and I ask my guys, like, what magic is going to happen today, guys? Like, show me some magic. And then things get to be magic. And yeah. Yeah. It's pretty simple once you get to that point. I feel like what you've just touched on, right, is what actual fulfillment is. Because we put, it's that, this then that thing again right it's like i will feel fulfilled when i have this marker out here of success right but that's what keeps fucking us up it's like that just needs to be the cherry on top the cherry on top of i'm so fucking fulfilled in what i do every single day and i'm so aligned with my soul and my gifts and my purpose and what i'm meant to be doing that it's like again of course that arrived you know, of course that appeared, of course this happened because I'm fulfilled. I am living a rich, courageous, fulfilled life. I am living a soul aligned life. I am, I am living an impact driven life. And all that other stuff is like the byproduct. It's the cherry on top. It's the, of course that arrived because look at what I'm doing over here in my, in my life, regardless of the outcome. Mm. See how we tied all of that all of those pieces i was gonna say we've got one more tie this is perfect because literally okay. we tied into perspective as well yep, we talked yep. about getting perspective by taking ourselves out of the world right and gaining that perspective but i'm like there's also the other perspective of like if you stop right now and look back to who you were a year ago and what you so desperately desired and you thought about the person that you are now and living the life you are now how would you feel? Because I'm like, if I think about who I was when I was, you know, doing depression, when I was doing anxiety, when I was doing the chronic illness, when I was like so unfulfilled and stuck and like doing all these different jobs, like I was like, oh my God, I'm going to be a yoga teacher. This is amazing. I went and taught yoga to kids. And by like the third week, I was like, this sucks. I hate this. I don't want to be a yoga teacher. I loved many other elements of it, but the actual like spending eight hours a day teaching yoga classes, I was like, this is fucked. I don't want to do this. Yeah. And when I look back to that person, if she could see who I was now and feel how free I feel within now, I would have thought at that point, this is the goal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. So that perspective as well of looking back and going like, oh, imagine if that version of me could feel this version of me. Yeah. Right? I think that's Being really important. It's fucking joy. Yeah, especially for people <laughs> and like, especially for women in business to go, oh my God, if I could see myself two years ago and be who I was now, even if you're just starting your business, like even for me, my business goes through these winters and summers yeah, because yeah. I really spend a lot of time like connecting to who I am, clearing a lot of ancestral stuff. And I feel like a lot of the frequencies of the world and it's very like consuming. And so I have to just remove myself from having like clients and then I'll get a few little ones drop in, 
but I'll have these periods where I'm like, I physically don't have the capacity to do that Mm. because I need to do this important inner work. And I know that that's my soul journey. And so I had to not make myself, you know, any less for that because there's other people that are like, boom, 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 push every day. And they've got these huge businesses growing. When I look back though, and if I have that perspective of looking at who I am now, I'm like, huh, that's what I would want. I would want that inner freedom, that inner fulfillment, the people around me who are these incredible humans that it's just so easy to just be yourself, yeah. right? And you get to learn from and share with and all these other incredible things that I have in my life that every day I'm like, this is fun. Like, I love my life. This is amazing. Yeah. But I wouldn't have that perspective. Yeah. Mm. If I didn't spend time looking back and going like, oh my God, that version of me, she would so desperately want to be this, even though it's not what was on her vision board. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Oh, I love it. Okay. So um, just for everyone listening, if you're loving this conversation and you're loving Siobhan, just, and you're like, don't end. Um, Cause we could (laughs) sit here all day and we could sit here all day. We really could. We have the book. (laughs) Um, but just know that Siobhan will be coming back. Um, and so will Anya. We're going to be coming on monthly to come together and talk about all of this stuff, talk about our journeys. Um, you know, that is like you said, like that, that is essentially what you and I specifically are here for. Like money gens, we're here to, to, to show human potential, you know, and uh, for a lot of us, we do that through our own life experience. Like you, you, you're a one, three, so you're the details and, and the trial and error and the, like the experience of it. And then it's like sharing that experience and how to actually apply that, that detailed knowledge for me as a six, two, like, um, the piece around the surrendering is so important because I can't do time frames because if you, if you look into like a six, two, we've got these like three phases of life. So, um, and of course, human design isn't a dogma. It doesn't mean that I'm locked into this, but like essentially the conversation for a, a 6-2 profile is like the first 30 years is the experimenting. This phase I'm in is the internal phase, the going in, the learning, the growing, the healing, like I'm on my roof, la la la. And it's, you know, not until like my 50s where I'm like really going to come into it, like really come into my own and really just like grow these epic things. So you can either sit there and go, holy fuck, that's like 15 years away. I can't wait 15 years before it happens. Like that's, that's not really what it means. It's about like that training ground again, right? It's like the experiences and the learnings and the lessons because then, and I'm still going to have create success, but like you were just saying, like um, not being so stuck on what that success needs to look like. You know, not yeah. like looking at I think we get to redefine market. success for ourselves, right? Exactly. Like, yeah. It's not like yeah. I'm still going to have success when I'm 50. It's like, no, yeah. I'm actually successful right now yes. in this phase. And yeah. the phase is going to look different when I'm 50. And it might be more society's version of success, yeah. actually. Mm. Whereas, like, when you just think about yourself and how successful you are right now, you know, you yep. like all the things you've already created and the experience mm-hmm. that you're living daily, like, to yeah, me, yeah. that's success. Is that's the beauty of being exciting. non-linear beings, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm going to get there, but I'm going to do all these other cool things and I'll still get there the same time as that person that's going along the dot-to-dot journey will get there, if not faster. And I'll have all of this. So hilarious because I, I see myself doing the manager and think every day. Like, it's yeah. so funny. I'll, like, you know, start one thing and then I stop for a second and then I go over here and I'm doing the next thing and then I'm doing the next thing. And I'm like, oh, I haven't actually finished that first thing, but it's fine because I don't need to go back there because I'm going to come back around to it. But yeah. I laugh all the time when I realize that I'm doing it. And I'm like, yeah, manage and love it. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm not going to, I'm going to just cause wrap because, it up. Yeah. So I have one last question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it is a question that, yeah, I ask every guest when they come on. So being that the show is called fearless i would really love to know what does the word fearless mean to you Mm -hmm. Ah. for me fearless is an inner freedom actually feeling free enough 
to go and do whatever I desire because other people would consider that fearless. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Love it. Love it. <laughs> okay. Um, where can people find you? I think we have shared this before in previous episode, but where can people find you if they want to come and pick your brain, get more of that detailed knowledge, be in your world? Where can they go? Yeah, absolutely. So on Instagram, I'm at Siobhan.Shrebniak. On Facebook, the same handle, same on TikTok. Those are my top three. Um, and, yeah, I've got some super special programs that are just about to start, so I'm really excited about that, and they'll be on my socials as well. So there's posts going out today. Yay, go and check them out because I've been in Siobhan's space and, uh, yeah, it's very powerful. She is definitely a soul activator. Like, <laughs> <laughs> definitely a soul activator within the, hold on for the ride <laughs> yeah what was it it was four it was a uh, four months then wasn't it when i it was joined. four months yeah, yeah. so but from now, now from it's the beginning be of like oh yeah i'm just keen to know some more information because i don't know anything about this realm to at the end of the four months oh i speak light language and i have a goddess a priestess template and i do this this and this like it's very rapid very powerful um, and very nourishing and supportive as well. You know, obviously that's what you're you're all about. So go in, go and check that out if if that's resonating with you. If anything you've heard has sparked an interest, go and check all of Siobhan's magic out. And thank you so much for being here on the show today. Thanks for having me, Crystal. Thank it's been you. amazing to chat, and I can't wait till our next activated angels catch up. Yes. <laughs>